Hello everyone, I am the Man of the Kirby, welcome to my channel The Commander Tavern. The Commander Tavern is a channel dedicated to my favorite Magic Gathering format. The Brewery is a series on this channel showcasing my spicy brews and other deck techs. On this episode of The Brewery, I'll be discussing my take on a commander from the Bloomboro Precons Zinnia Valley's Voice. If you like this deck or any of the cards I'll be mentioning throughout the video, please consider using my TCG Player affiliate link when purchasing those cards. You can find that link down in the description, it'll really help out the channel and no extra cost to you. But the very best way you can help support the channel is with my Patreon. There are plenty of perks for being a patron such as early access to certain videos, exclusive deck text, gifts and more for as little as $1. You could also become a channel member for just 99 cents. Show off your support with a logo next to your name and exclusive emojis. Or you can always just support my channel for free by simply liking, subscribing and sharing which also helps out a lot. I put out a video every Monday so you don't want to miss out. You can join my Discord server for free if you want to join the Commander Tavern community. All pertinent links are down in the description. Alright, let's get back to the episode. Zinnia is a 1-3 bird bard with flying for 1 blue, 1 red, and 1 white. It gives all of your creature spells offspring 2, which means that you can pay 2 generic extra when casting your creature spells in order to get a 1-1 token copy of it when it enters the battlefield. Right off the bat, this ability is impressively malleable to build around. Your imagination is the limit to what kind of creatures you want to make the most of this ability with, as well as any type of strategy you want to employ. If that weren't enough, Zinnia is an amazing Voltron commander since it gets plus X plus zero where X is the number of other creatures you control with base power 1. Make enough tokens with 1 power and this will end games. With so many ways of building around Zinnia, what did I do for my deck? I decided to go for something a bit more aggressive. In other words, I'm running a lot of creatures that pump creatures I control in order to copy them and get even bigger anthem effects. Banalish Marshal, Angel of Jubilation, Thistledown Liege, Ultramarines, Honor Guard, Angel of Invention, Balefire Liege, and Elishnorn Grand Cenobite are the ones included. Over half of the deck is white, which also goes to creatures. So the Lieges do their job just fine here. The Angels will also do significant work. As a bonus, Angel of Invention has the potential of entering with 4 1 1 servo tokens if you manage to offspring it. The Ultramarines have Squad, which is better than Offspring since you could pay it as many times as you want. With so many token synergy effects, this card closes out games. Elish Norn might seem like an odd choice due to the Legend Rule, but even before I get into breaking the Legend Rule, when state-based actions are checked, creatures you don't control will get minus 4 minus 4 before the token copy gets sacrificed. Best of all, these pump effects don't alter Xenia's pump ability since 1 power creatures will still be considered to have a base power of 1 even if we increase it. Now, if we were breaking the legend rule when we're copying Elish Norn, then this is game ending. Not only are we removing all potential blockers, but our attackers are just bigger. Enter Mirror Box, Kadric, Soul Kindler, and Sekashima of a Thousand Faces. Mirror Box is pretty self-explanatory, but it's also another pump effect, at least for legendary creatures. Kadric breaks the rule only for tokens, which is fine because that's how we'll be copying legends anyways. If we manage to copy Kadric himself, then we can pay 2 generic to get 2 copies of legendary permanents entering the battlefield, which is even spicier. Sakashima can enter as a copy of anything, so just copy the best creature in play. As a bonus, you can offspring him too. Now, if we're really pumping our horde, we said need horde. Anointed Procession, Mandrak Glory Dominance, and Oher Tak Deepest Foundation are thus obviously included in the deck. Imagine having any of these in play when you offspring something like Angel of Invention. You'll have 3 copies of it in play along with 12 servo tokens that are going to be 4 fours thanks to the pump effects. And that's just what we came up off the top of my head. Again, your imagination is the limit. Must of the Departed, Nestling Dovehawk, and Sung of the World Soul help amass our army via Populate. There aren't many Populate effects outside of green, but I liked how these performed in the deck. The first one will almost always Populate at end of turn because the deck is aggressive. The bird is amazing because it can be cast with offspring, so you can have each copy token populate its other token for exponential insanity. Song of the World Soul is like a free offspring cost if you already have creature tokens in play. Kaith Famed Mechanist can also populate but by activating her. However, more than that, giving all of your non-token creatures Fabricate 1, you can either make them bigger or, more realistically, use all your non-token creatures as a source for 1-1 one, one creature tokens in order to amass your horde as well as pump Zinnia. She's absolutely amazing here, checking both boxes. Romana 2 can sort of populate in the sense that you have to activate her to copy a token that entered that turn. Keep in mind that this isn't restricted to your tokens though, so if an opponent gets a Marit Lage, so can you. Granted, that's a meme-worthy situation, but the fact remains that she's more versatile than at first glance. Brutaclad Telker Engineer doesn't populate per se, but since it creates a Mer token at the beginning of combat, you can then turn that into your best token, along with all of your tokens. I absolutely love this card and it does some impressive work here. Again, your imagination is the limit. 
When testing this deck, I managed to turn all of my tokens into copies of Elish Nor. So yeah, it's staying in here. Altec Matter Weaver can also help amass our army, but not via population or copying. It's more similar to Kaith in that we can create 1-1 one, one artifact creature tokens whenever we cast a creature spell. So this also helps pump Xenia even further. You could also copy an artifact token we control, but that'll almost always just be a servo or a gnome. Castle Arden Vale, Dwarven Mine, Gilderland Outpost, and Mirex can also create 1-1 one, one creature tokens, but these are auto-includes because they don't take up slots in the deck, and give us something to do with our extra mana at the beginning of the end step of the turn before ours. Besides pumping our game-ending horde of tokens, we can also copy versatile creatures such as those that provide card advantage and or mana acceleration. To that end, Esper Sentinel, Mentor of the Meek, Rumor Gatherer, Benny Brax, Zoologist, Curiosity Crafter, Fire Main Commando, and an Escarpment Fortress are included. Being able to copy these creatures with offspring and then populating them will help us burn through our library like nothing. Granted, Mentor of the Meek won't trigger if we have a couple of pump effects in play, but it's amazing when we don't. So we can cover all of our bases. Benny being legendary might be a problem at first, but not after we get our legend rule breaking effects. Curiosity Crafter is especially impressive since the deck is so aggressive. Just be careful because it is not a you may effect. So beware decking yourself if you copy this thing multiple times. Idol of Oblivion and Staff of the Storyteller can be copied but provide synergistic card advantage nonetheless. They're great to include especially since they're cheap to cast, so are amazing if drawn in the early game. As for Mana Acceleration, Pro Medallion, Cloud Key, Grand Arbiter Augustine 4, Stone Calendar, and Aketra's Monument help us out via cost reduction. Since Offspring is a generic costed kicker effect, having at least two of these means that creature spells we cast will have a free 1-1 one -one copy. Now, some of these are limited to white creatures, but that's fine since almost half of the deck is white and most creatures are white, so Pearl Medallion and Oketra's Monument do amazing work here. Especially the Monument since it'll create the 1-1 one -one Warrior token regardless of the colors of the cast creature. Augustine might seem like a mean card, but not really. It's here mostly to reduce our spells. The Sax effect is just a bonus. Now, if you copy him while having Legend Rule breaking effects in play, that's deliciously evil. All that being said, the powerhouse in Mana Acceleration is found on Palancron. This along with your commander is all you need for infinite mana. Why? Because if you cast this with Offspring, it and its copy will untap 7 lands you control. So in response to either trigger, you can tap down your lands in order to have them untap before the resolution of the second trigger. This will cost you 9 mana, but will give you 14 mana afterwards. Since it has a built-in bounce effect of 4 mana, you need 9 plus 4 equals 13 mana to cast with Offspring and return to your hand to do all over again. This will give you 1 net mana each time. Speaking of bouncing, the deck is running Crystal Shard and Erratic Portal. These are amazing for if you have non-token creatures you want to recast with Offspring. Just bounce them to your hand and cast them later. Not only that, but they're also useful to bounce your creatures in a pinch to respond to interaction. These are two of the most versatile artifacts in this deck and have come in clutch each and every time. Last time I tested this, I was able to bounce a legend after I had a legend rule breaking effect in play, just to be able to cast it with Offspring and keep the copy token. So good. Prosperous Partnership also serves as mana acceleration for when we're creating a ton of tokens. Tapping 3 creatures for a single treasure seems steep, but when we're doubling tokens it gets out of hand very easily, especially since we can do this at instant speed and as often as we can. As previously mentioned, we seek to end the game by overwhelming the board with tokens or with a beefy commander. To that end, Rogue's Passage is included in order to make sure it gets through to take somebody out. Ideally, we can take out someone with commander damage while we take out others with a massive army. While the deck can function without the commander, Lightning Greaves, Swiftfoot Boots, Champion's Helm, and Mithril Coat are nonetheless included to protect it since a Voltron win is possible. All our creature spells having offspring is also super powerful, so protecting Xenia is still worth it to make the deck even better as it's played. Flawless Maneuver, Guardian of Faith, Teferi's Protection, Clever Concealment, and the No More Half of Gallifrey Falls No More are included in order to protect our board state from mass board wipes. Keep in mind that indestructibility is not always enough to protect tokens since they disappear if bounced, tucked, exiled, etc. Keep in mind that if you have enough mana, you can offspring Guardian of Faith so that the token phases out the original, which you can then bounce later on in order to always be able to protect your board. Timing is everything. Perplexing Tests, Crisis of Conscience, and Hour of Reckoning are included as our own board wipes, but more often than not, will only leave our board intact in order to not only get rid of problems, but blockers too. Since our board is hopefully mostly tokens, these definitely help us close out games. Elspeth Tyrell also achieves this with her ultimate. This requires an extra turn after she hits the battlefield, but her plus 2 ability helps us out with the life gain. If she sticks around long enough, we can also use her as a 1-1 creature token generator. 
Halo Founder is another way to win the game if we're unable to deal damage to opponents directly. Untapping 15 tapped creatures is enough to win it. While this might be off-putting to players who don't like insta-win effects, you can omit it altogether from your deck or just use its other modes which are also incredibly useful here. You can make a 1-1 token which matters or draw a card which is also good. Naturally, we're going to also need non-synergistic effects as these. The deck is running Fierce Guardianship, an offer you can't refuse, Swan Song, Negate for the counter magic, with Chaos Warp, Generous Gift, and Stroke of Midnight for single target removal, with Guffrey Wright's History and Unexplained Absence for multi-target removal. These are pretty self-explanatory and fortunately, we're in the colors for good interaction. Especially since we can also include Vandal Blast and Cyclonic Rift for more one-sided board wipes. Yes, the non-token destruction effects are good, but so is overloading Cyclonic Rift. Mystic Sanctuary is included to help us top deck any of these cards, getting them with the fetch lands in a pinch. You can also do the same with Dwarven Mind for that pro game remove, so keep that in mind. Speaking of useful lands, Velocut Awakening and Glass Pool Mimic are considered land slots since I'm not greedy or over ambitious and use them as lands if I miss the land drop. The former is great card filtering while the latter is amazing with offspring, giving us two of our best creatures in play. Last but not least is Soul Ring, but again, as always, this one should have been expected by now. The rest of the deck is just the rest of the lands. The deck's running all 9 fetch lands, all 3 shock lands, all 3 opponent lands, Rogren Triome, Command Tower, and Ancient Tomb, as well as 3 of each basic land. As with all of my deck techs, you can build your mana base according to your budget. Whether you include more expensive cards or even cheaper cards is up to you. You do you. This brew is just an idea of how to build around Zinnia Valley's Voice. As previously mentioned, it has so many ways to build around because it's not really defined to do anything particular at first glance. Being able to copy your creatures for just 2 generic mana is super strong, even if the copies are just 1-1. One, one. Your imagination is the limit to how you build it. That being said, let me know how you would build it in the comments. And if you're interested in the decklist of this spicy brew of mine, you can find a link to it down in the description. I would like to thank all my patrons for supporting me and a quick shout out to all my higher tier patrons, the brewers, for their patronage. I'd also like to thank anyone using my TCG player affiliate link. That also helps out the channel. I also want to thank any channel members. Your membership is greatly appreciated. And to everyone, thanks for watching this episode of The Brewery on the Commander Tavern. I am the Meta Kirby, and happy brewing!